Hi guys, it is another miserable, nasty, hot, sticky, wildfire, smoke choked day in the end times in the former paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this just blah, depressing Saturday morning in the end times, uh, Saturday, June 17th, 2017, I believe it is, somewhere around there. So anyway, it being Saturday morning, this is uh, the time I get to bring you my weekly clueless moron roundup rant, where I simply go on to the pages of the mainstream media, look at all sorts of evidence how this planet's collective IQ is heading directly down the toilet as it heads into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, guys, I was going to start off with some Donald Trump clueless fucking moron stories. I don't have the stomach for it. Fuck Donald Trump. So we're going to, uh, anyway, I guess I'm just going, that was the first five stories. Put this little dog back. And, uh, but before I get into the regular list, we just have this emergency announcement from the mainstream media this morning. The mainstream media, one of the top 100 stories on planet Earth today. Okay, so you're the editor of Yahoo News, and uh, picture yourself. You're the editor of, of, of one of the biggest news organizations on the planet. You know, looking through all of the various contenders for the top 100 stories or so that you want to share with your readers. And uh, no doubt you too would have chosen this story. Mom's note to stranger at McDonald's who got involved when her toddler would not go potty. A stranger in a McDonald's bathroom overheard a typical fight between a mom and her toddler. The Kansas parent was trying to reason with her three-year-old to pee before they left to get back in the car. The stranger listened in through, through the bathroom stall. The stranger in a McDonald's bathroom listened in as Tiffany Miller tried to explain to her daughter that it was a long drive home and she had to use the potty before they left. She, the stranger, also heard the child explain that she was afraid the toilet was going to flush <laughs> while she was sitting on it. Despite her mother promising to block the sensor and prevent it from flushing, the little girl would not comply and promised to make it through the long drive home without having an accident. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Anyway, uh, after that special red alert from uh, Yahoo News on the uh, biggest, one of the biggest stories on planet Earth, Let's go look at Mormons. I haven't had a good Mormon rant uh, in way too long. And uh, good God. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to give you a little taste of a Mormon rant. Polygamous cult leader Lyle Jeffs went from steak and scallops to pawn shops. Lyle Jeffs, chosen as acting leader of the FLDS after his brother Warren's 
in prison, but lived out of his truck after fleeing house arrest and was tripped up by a pawn shop visit. There you go. Lyle Jeffs was not swept away in the rapture after all. This was uh, his, his attorney trying to explain why he didn't show up for his court date was maybe he had been swept away in the rapture is what that's a reference to. So Lyle Jeffs was not swept away in the rapture after all, but he may be living in the end times. The fugitive former cult leader was arrested Wednesday night, a down and out guy living out of his truck, so desperate for money, he risked coming out of hiding to sell his Leatherman pliers to a pawn shop for $37.00. The clerk jotted down his driver's license, name and number, Googled him, and found out that the nervous guy at the counter was wanted by the FBI. After the clerk tipped off the FBI, authorities found the 57-year-old former bishop of the polygamous fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints living out of his truck alone, his eight wives and 60 children, and 60 children taken from him by his big brother, Warren. Warren Jeffs is the self-described prophet of the FLDS who himself is serving a life sentence for his marriages to a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old. After Warren's imprisonment, Lyle Jeffs was chosen to be uh, the acting leader of the FLDS. Lyle Jeffs did not rule for long he was among 11 church members indicted for child labor violations and food stamp extortion. Guys, anyway, I think we've heard enough uh, about this fucking asshole and his eight spiritual wives and his 60 children and his brother fucking a 12-year-old. You know, again, don't get me going on these fucking Mormons. They make, they make goddamn Muslims, uh, you know, look like that. That's clueless fucking Mormons. You know, bring me a goddamn Muslim with only 36 children any day. Fuck you. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go over to Lebanon. Garbage dumped in sea off Lebanon sparks outrage. A mountain of garbage dumped at sea off Beirut, Lebanon under a deal <clears throat> between the government and a private company has sparked outrage in Lebanon two years after mass protest over a waste crisis. For the past 10 days, uh, civil society groups shared images of trucks carrying rubbish and throwing it into the Mediterranean Sea, a process that is still ongoing. There you go. Uh, this is one of the, an activist from the You Stink campaign. Quote, they are taking garbage from this mountain of garbage that has been there for 20 years and throwing it into the sea. <clears throat> Environment Minister Tayrak al Khatib confirmed the existence of the agreement between the CDR, whoever that is, 
and a private firm to dump the waste into the sea. <clears throat> uh, we will see what this story has to do with waste in a few years. Japan, of all the countries on this planet, Japan court clears way for more nuclear reactor restarts. A Japanese court Tuesday gave the green light to switch on two more nuclear reactors despite heavy public opposition and the latest victory for the government's pro-atomic push. Yes. Residents in the area unsuccessfully argued that the ut utility had not taken enough measures to prevent an accident linked to a natural disaster. Uh, much of the public in Japan remains wary of nuclear power after the disaster at Fukushima spewed radiation over a large area and forced tens of thousands to leave their homes with some unlikely to ever return. Last week, Japan's nuclear energy agency said five more employees were exposed to dangerously high levels of radiation after a bag containing plutonium broke apart during a routine inspection. Nonetheless, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has aggressively promoted nuclear energy in his country, calling it essential to powering the world's third largest economy. From uh, Japan to Pennsylvania. Abnormally dangerous? Pennsylvania court refuses to stop drilling under oil refineries huge gas tank. A state appeals court has refused to revoke a permit granted by Donald Trump's and Scott Pruitt's EPA for oil drilling underneath an oil refinery. Is it abnormally dangerous to drill and frack for oil under a massive oil refinery, particularly if that well is bored beneath a tank filled with 3.6 million gallons of gasoline? Okay, from Pennsylvania to North Korea. North Korea says U.S. student released on humanitarian grounds. North Korea released U.S. student Otto Warmbier on, quote, humanitarian grounds. North Korean state media said Thursday, uh, two days after falling into a coma while imprisoned in a labor camp. The 22-year-old University of Virginia student from Cincinnati spent more than a year in North Korean detention after being arrested for stealing a political poster from a hotel. His family have said he was terrorized and brutalized by little maggot Kim Jong-un's regime. And of course he has some severe neurological disorder. Anyway, let's go from uh, North Korea, just back to our own country here uh, in the last few days of springtime as thoughts turn to summer vacation, or maybe not. 
summer vacation? Lots of Americans say they just can't afford it. Frequent flyer miles, last minute getaways, and even road trips. Nearly half of Americans say they will not be taking any vacation this summer, mostly because they cannot afford it. According to this uh, AP poll, 43% of Americans will not be taking a summer vacation. The top reason for skipping vacation this year was the cost, cited by 49%. Another 11% said they just can't take the time off from work, and 3% said they don't like being away from work. And I like this finding from the poll. Most Americans do use at least some of their paid time off if they even have the option, but many still leave their paid vacation days on the table. 14% of workers who get paid vacation time off from their jobs did not use any of the days they had coming to them. And just half of those with paid vacation time used up all or most of the days they were entitled to in the past year. Moving along, uh, I don't know whether this can be lumped into summer vacation or not. This is Mexican immigrants on vacation. <clears throat> Border Patrol arrests immigrants seeking medical care during desert heat wave. The arrest, which active this say violates an agreement to allow humanitarian aid workers to conduct emergency medical care for immigrants could drive border crossers deeper into the desert. Border Patrol agents on Thursday arrested four undocumented immigrants receiving emergency medical care at an encampment run by humanitarian activists a few miles north of the Mexican border in Arizona. The arrest came during a heat wave, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the camp is run by the group No More Deaths. In a tweet Thursday evening, the organization said, quote, 30 armed Federal Border Patrol agents entered the camp with at least 15 trucks, two quads, and a helicopter to apprehend four patients receiving care. Okay, from them Mexicans, from them Mexicans coming over here stealing their jobs. Let's go over to the state of Texas. Uh, this story came in right after I finished this rant uh, last week. <clears throat> I'm just going to touch on two stories. Two toddlers die in horrific death after mother intentionally, intentionally leaves them in her car for 15 hours. Two toddler sisters died in a car after their mother intentionally left them in a car for more than 15 hours hours. This is 19-year-old Amanda Hawkins. Hawkins 
has been named as the Mother of the Year by Kerr County Sheriff W.R. Heerholzer. Yes, uh, quoting the sheriff, this is by far the most horrific case of child endangerment that I have seen in the 37 years that I have been in law enforcement. And uh, so this is an update on that story out of the great state of Texas looking at teenage mothers in Texas. Mom accused of leaving children in hot car for 15 hours allegedly said, quote, they will cry themselves to sleep. The Texas mom charged in the death of her two young daughters allegedly told friends to ignore the cries coming from her children in her car, saying they would eventually tire themselves out, according to reports. Uh, the vehicle's windows were rolled up as temperatures dipped into the 60s overnight, but by noon the next day, temperatures had climbed to about uh, 85 degrees uh, outside with the humidity making it feel like 105 degrees and the girls were left without food, water, or anywhere to use the bathroom for 15 hours. At one point, someone inside the home allegedly heard the girls crying and asked Hawkins to bring them in. Quote, she said, no, it's fine. They will cry themselves to sleep. There you go. And unless the, uh, and, and so she's up on what are the charges uh, to counts of endangering a child. Two counts of endangering a child, and unless a grand jury decides to upgrade the charges, now that the girls have died, uh, if she is found guilty of the charges she presently faces, she could face up to two years in prison. And, uh, well, my guess is the charges will be upgraded, but how many people out there agree with me that uh, at some point in the future, this clueless fucking bitch will get out of prison and go right on breeding? This fucking bitch deserves to die. And uh, not only will she not die, even in the state of Texas, uh, she, she will sure as shit not get sterilized. There is a better chance, matter of fact, that she will die in the electric chair than getting sterilized. Okay, from mother of the year to daycare worker of the year, or daycare workers of the year, in this case, five-year-old dies after being left in daycare van in Arkansas. This is four employees at a daycare center in West Memphis, Arkansas, were fired Wednesday following the death of a five-year-old boy who was left unattended inside a company van all day. Christopher Gardner Jr. was found dead inside a van at the Ascent Children's Health Services, Services uh, facility. Yeah, on the day of the incident, the facility's van picked up Christopher 
in the early morning from his home. However, the staff did not take him out of the van after getting back to the facility. Okay, well we've talked about the mother of the week or the year, so let's go a cute fuzzy little Father's Day story. I think tomorrow is Father's Day. Okay, let's uh, listen to this cute warm and fuzzy Father's Day story. He shooted her. Dad kills daughter while warning his kids not to play with guns. An Indiana father shot and killed his nine-year-old daughter while telling his children not to play with guns, police said. Quote, she's dead. She's fucking dead, he told officers who arrived at the home. Uh, we still do not know the name of this clueless fucking moron. You know, you think the editor of the article by this point might have named this fucker. But anyway, his daughter's name was Olivia Hummel, who was unresponsive and lying in a bedroom entrance when uh, police arrived. Uh, I guess we're never going to know this motherfucker's, I guess his last name was Hummel. Do you think so? Okay. Uh, let's see. The dad told officers he had been showing the weapons to his twin 10-year-old sons and told them to never use a gun when his daughter walked into the room, he pulled the trigger, shooting the girl in the head. The boys told police their father had forgotten he had put bullets in the gun. Earlier, he had emptied the weapon and pulled the trigger while pointing it at the boys. He then reload, reloaded the gun, and when Olivia walked into the room, he said, see, don't play with guns, and shot her. Quote, he shooted her, one of the boys, told officers on the scene. There you go. Hummel has been released on $70,000 bail. What's going on in, uh, the, in with United Airlines this week? I already uh, yesterday was talking about United Flight nearly takes off with fuel leak until passengers convince crew there is a problem. Yes. The customer is always wrong. This is generally a good rule to follow when you work for an airline. <laughs> oh God, uh, anyway, so that tragedy was diverted, but uh, let's see, from that story to a United Airlines employee attacks an elderly man in shocking new video. The hits keep coming for United Airlines, or rather from United Airlines. Just a few months after United employees battered a paying customer while forcibly, forcibly removing him from his seat, another man is alleging violence at the hands of the airline staff, and it is tough to argue with this video. Just say, you do need to go watch this video, guys. It's all over YouTube. Just put in United Airlines employee punching customer. This is Ronald Tigner 
has filed a $1 million lawsuit against United Airlines after an employee shoved him violently to the ground, then left his lifeless body lying there. It's, it's right there, it, 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 anyone uh, not understanding the friendly skies of United. Anyway, let's go from airplanes to ships. What is up with the U.S. Navy this week? Don't look in at the U.S. Navy very often. U.S. sailor presumed lost at sea is found hiding on his own ship. A U.S. sailor who was thought to be lost at sea has been found hiding in his own ship. The sailor Peter Mims went missing off the coast of Japan on June 8th and his disappearance prompted a massive U.S. Navy and Maritime Self-Defense Force search over thousands of nautical miles of of ocean, but the search was called off when Mims was found hiding on his own ship. And I don't know whether that has anything to do with this story or not. From Newsweek magazine, U.S. Navy bans e-cigarettes after multiple sailors suffer serious burns from exploding batteries. The United States Navy has placed an indefinite ban on the use of electronic cigarettes aboard its ships, submarines, and aircraft after multiple sailors suffered serious injuries from the device's batteries exploding and catching fire. In a statement Friday, the U.S. Fleet Force's Public Affairs said the policy had been implemented, quote, to protect the safety and welfare of sailors and to protect the ships, submarines, aircraft, and equipment. Okay, now I think it was just last week I told you everything you need to know about Bachelor in Paradise, but I guess there's one thing I left off the list of everything you need to know about Bachelor in Paradise. Several versions of this story. Bachelor in Paradise pro producers shirk responsibility for alleged sexual assault. Disturbing details continue to emerge about the events that led to a production halt on the TV series Bachelor in Paradise. While all reports remain unconfirmed at this time, it appears a sexual assault occurred between two cast members, believed to be Corrine Olympios and DeMario Jackson. And I'm going to stop here before I get accused of being a racist. Okay, but uh, Uber, you better be damn well that Uber CEO, uh, what's his name, Travis Kalanick, uh, was shirking no responsibility uh, over, over at his company. As Uber CEO lays out sex guidelines in employee email, Uber CEO Travis Kalanick decided to share some sage advice with his employees before a celebration in Miami about having sex, Kalanick outlined some rules for the parta, including a few about inter-office sex, keg throwing, 
and puke charges. Puke charges. Yes. Uh, so this email, quote, I have gotten a list of concerns from our legal department. I have translated these concerns into a clear set of common sense guidelines that have added a few items of my own. Okay, here's one. Quote, do not throw large kegs off of tall, tall buildings. Please talk to, I guess, these lawyers for specific insights on this topic. There you go. And Kalanick bestowed some words of wisdom about sexual relations. Quote, do not have sex with another employee unless A, you have asked that person for that privilege and they have responded with an emphatic, yes, I will have sex with you. And B, that the two or more of you having, you know, consensual sex do not work in the same chain of command. Okay, and he also advised his employees to, quote, have a great fucking time, and added that Miami's transportation system sucks ass. Long as we're talking about Uber, you can now have McDonald's deliver to you with Uber Eats. McDonald's is launching Mick Delivery through Uber Eats. And Memphis will be one of the first cities to make Mick Delivery available to customers. Sadly, you will not be able to order ice cream cones, but everything else on the menu will be available. According to McDonald's, your food can now be delivered to your home, office, Little League game, or wherever else you might want a Big Mac. Okay, uh, if you've uh, seen my own video, something like the single grossest bug story you have ever heard in your life or something like that, which I will not repeat here, I had a, uh, a, a special, uh, a special, shall we say, soft spot uh, in my heart for this guy. <clears throat> Man bitten on genitalia by venomous spider twice. Yes. A man from Sydney, Australia has been dubbed the unluckiest man in Australia after he was bitten by a red back spider on his genitalia twice in the same year. The first bite happened in a portable toilet on a work site in, in April. That incident caused him to become diligent about checking for creepy crawling things before going to the bathroom. But what do you know, it happened yet again on the same area of his body. Quote, I was sitting on the toilet doing my business and just felt the sting that I felt the first time. I was like, I cannot believe this has happened again. I looked down and saw a few little legs come from around 
the rim. Mm. The Australian spider is venomous, but not usually lethal. Effects of this spider's venom include swelling and escalating pain. A serious bite, usually from the female spider. <laughs> we will make no blowjob jokes here. Can cause nausea, vomiting, headaches, abdominal pain, chest pain, generalized sweating, and increased blood pressure. Anyway, from an outhouse in Australia, we're just going to wind up with this sentence where your clueless moron has no clue what this headline means, and I really don't care to find out, but I think it's a good a place as any to wrap up a clueless moron roundup rant. Nintendo probably did not want Super Mario Odyssey to inspire so much existential dread. But here we are. Here we are in existential dread on this uh, depressing, dreadful Saturday morning. Well, hell, I guess it's, well, hell, it's Saturday afternoon here in the end times. Uh, and I need to go track down some uh, muddy irrigation ditch uh, to see what nibbles uh, on, on, on my own genitalia trying to cool off in the end times. Bye, guys.